I wanted to give you this personal introduction to my new course, Jesus and the Dead Sea Scrolls. What a title. Jesus, the historical Jesus. I spent four decades of my academic career studying the historical figure of Jesus and what he was all about. And the Dead Sea Scrolls, the oldest trove of ancient Jewish manuscripts ever found, preserved for over 2,000 years in the Judean desert on the lowest spot on earth, the Dead Sea. Now, what do the two have to do with one another? Let me start with a little riddle or quiz. If I describe to you an ancient Jewish group from the Roman period, and here's how I described it, an apocalyptic messianic group, they're preparing the way in the wilderness. If you ask them what they're doing, they quote Isaiah 43. They say, we're the new covenant people. We're the people of the new covenant. We are children of light. That's what they call themselves. They practice dipping in water, running water, preferably, as a rite of initiation into their community. They follow a prophet, a teacher, they call him, a righteous teacher who they believe is like a new Moses, bringing a new view of the Torah and a new covenant. They emphasize the Holy Spirit. They're led by a council of 12 and an inner group of three. They're told to sell their possessions, and they put everything into a common treasury, and they practice a kind of communal living and share with everyone in the group and consider them all brothers and sisters. They don't like the Jewish temple that Herod the Great built, and they don't like the way it's being run by the priests. In fact, they refer to the temple as utterly corrupt, and the priests who are running the whole show are like a brood of vipers to these people. They consider prayer as their sacrifice. They don't need the temple. And they consider themselves as a temple of God. Now, I listed 12 things there. And you know what? Who was I describing? Well, I was describing the Dead Sea Scroll group, but every one of those 12 apply to Jesus of Nazareth from what we can reconstruct, or certainly to his movement and those who followed him. Now, I could add another dozen, and in this course, we go into even more as we compare. But those are the polarities of the course. Here's Jesus. Here are the Dead Sea Scrolls. What do they have in common? Now, let me point out, if you've heard of Pharisees and Sadducees, they're mentioned in the New Testament, not a single one of those characteristics apply to either of them. So, I mean, these really stand out. And if they characterize the Jesus movement and they characterize the Dead Sea Scroll movement and they're not the same movement, which I don't think they are, then they're 150 years apart at least. What do we make of that? And that's what this course explores. The Dead Sea Scrolls are a vast library preserved for over 2,000 years. Probably over 800 volumes were in this collection we don't have them all, and many are just represented by little fragments and pieces, but they, we can tell that they were once a scroll or a book. But some of the scrolls are fairly complete. We've got the Isaiah scroll that's a complete copy of the book of Isaiah. But you're probably thinking, if it's 2,000 years earlier than our Isaiah that we have before the Dead Sea Scrolls, when was that dated? Well, that's the Masoretic text of the Hebrew Bible, and it dates when? 1000 CE or AD. And now we have a copy of Isaiah that's from before the beginning of the first century. We usually date it about first century BCE at some point. So you certainly want to take a look at the differences, if there are any, between the Isaiah copy and one copied for a thousand years. Did some changes come in? Is it like anything else we know that's very ancient? All of that is addressed in this course. We have an entire lecture on the Dead Sea Scroll Bible, as we could call it. So in the 10 lessons, we cover all of these questions. What are the scrolls? What are their contents? We analyze the group and their beliefs, and we compare them to what we know of the Jesus movement. 
And I'm not saying it's totally similar. It certainly isn't. There are some stark differences and we explore those. And you can really get a handle on these two forms of apocalyptic Judaism in the late second temple period. I think the number one thing that most characterizes them is they think the end has drawn very near. And they talk about the end of days coming. They say things like, this generation will not pass till all these things are fulfilled. Am I quoting Jesus as he's quoted in Mark 13, or am I quoting the Dead Sea Scrolls? I'm giving you a version of both. One thing you might not realize, when I started studying the Dead Sea Scrolls in graduate school, this was the slim little volume that I used. Look at that. Dead Sea Scrolls in English. Here's the volume we're going to use in the course. And what happened? Well, in 1991, the unpublished scrolls were suddenly released. So the scrolls came out in December 1991, the photographs. And guess where I was in January 1992, as the year turned, just as the scrolls came out. I was at Qumran for a month. I was working with Dr. Eisenman, and there was a lot of controversy stirred up when these scrolls came out. And I'll tell you all of those adventures. I've got some PBS footage that's archive footage from 30 years ago. You'll get to see a younger James Tabor, very excited about the scrolls at the moment I first was able to view some of the ones that I ended up actually publishing, first of all. So there's so much in the course. There's a huge course pack you get. It's over 50 pages of material, all kinds of PDF documents you can download, videos, all sorts of extra things, and of course, the lectures themselves. So sign up for the course if this sounds interesting. We're going to have a set of Zoom meetings for those who sign up, and we'll meet monthly, and we will talk about the scrolls and People taking the course and questions, you'll have your own invitation, not a webinar where you just listen to me talk and get to ask some questions in a chat. No, everybody can come on screen and we'll all be together. So I hope you all will take a look at this. You can browse and see all the features of the course. It's really fabulous. I've been working on this for the last three months, trying to put it together. I want to make it absolutely the best quality. And I want to thank the Lamberts Derek and Ryan of Myth Vision Podcast for making this possible because they've done such an amazing job in putting it together. So happy studying, happy reading of the Dead Sea Scrolls. Take care, everyone.